everyone. Today, let's talk about flying in cold weather. Okay, it is about two or three degrees Fahrenheit out here right now, and there's a strong breeze, so that wind chill is freezing cold. So I'm gonna go back in the car, because it's too cold out here to be talking. <laughs> All right, so now I'm back inside my car where it's nice and warm. I'm not out in the cold and the wind, and it is it is really uh, just a couple of degrees Fahrenheit out there with well below zero wind chills. So like I said a moment ago, I would like to talk about some of the tips that I have learned over the past couple of winters of flying in really cold weather. And first of all, I want to say cold weather is very relative. Uh, cold to me may not be cold to someone else, and what's cold to someone else may not be cold to me at all. Uh, in my experience, when I'm talking about cold weather, I'm talking about below freezing temperatures or well below freezing, maybe even well below zero Fahrenheit temperatures. I'm in Minnesota and it's snowy and it's cold and the winters are long and there's crazy wind chill. Um, last winter I went and flew, flew during a, uh, when the National Weather Service declared a blizzard, I went out and found a place to go fly. Uh, there was also another time where I flew at something like 15 to 20 degrees below zero as the actual air temperature. And there's a few things that you have to know when you go out and fly in temperatures like that. So the biggest tip I have, the first thing that you really need to know is I would strongly suggest you get yourself some silicon modified conformal coating and you put it on all of your electronics, all of the exposed connections, everything you can. Get that thing, your flight controller, your speed controls, everything like that really well coated in conformal coating so that the snow and moisture in the air doesn't uh, cause any short circuits. So you should look up some other videos, maybe I'll have some links to those about how to conformal coat everything because you have to be careful if your flight controller has a barometer on it, you definitely don't want to get any conformal coating on that or your barometer won't work anymore and your USB ports don't get any conformal coating on the USB ports or they won't work anymore. Uh, and be careful about cameras and sensors and things like that. But otherwise, coat your flight controller, coat your ESCs, and they will be much better protected when you land in snow or crash in snow, when you bring it inside your house or in your car and things warm up and melt. You just, you don't want all that wetness and moisture causing problems. So as you probably noticed, when I go flying in weather like this, I choose to fly from inside my car where I can keep the car running, keep the heat going, and keep myself nice and warm. One of the downsides to that is when you bring the drone back inside from being out in the cold, everything fogs up and puts moisture on your lenses, puts moisture on everything, which is why I mentioned earlier that you really need to do the conformal coating. But just be aware that your GoPro lens, your FPV camera lens will get coated in a little bit of fog or moisture. And usually when I put it back outside again, the cold will take that away. But just be careful um, if you crash into a snowbank or something and your camera sensor really gets fogged up, uh, you might not be able to fly for a while till that clears up again. Also related to the fogging up of electronics, if you're sitting in your car and you're creating a lot of moisture in the air, and there's some cold air coming around, you might end up having your goggles fog up a little bit more than you're used to. So if you do have a fan on your FPV goggles, make sure you're using that. So when you're out flying in a location like where I'm at now, where there's some big open fields and it's just pure white, and if you're flying on a cloudy overcast day, you'll run into snow conditions that I guess, um, Something I've learned from like downhill skiing, they call it flat conditions. If the lighting's just right, you can't see the textures, the bumps, the hills in the snow very well. And you'll be cruising along, flying really low to the ground, and all of a sudden, bam, you'll just run into a snowbank that you didn't even see at all because the, the hill, the ground changed a little bit. And before you know it, you're in the ground. So that's something to be careful about. Uh, in the winter, I do prefer flying when the sun's a little lower in the sky and when it's a little bit brighter out and you can sort of see the shadows and that makes it a lot easier to fly. And it makes for some really pretty shots too.
Well, that was a slick way to land in the winter. There's another tip for flying in cold weather. And like I was talking about, I tend to fly from inside my car. Other people will still brave the elements and fly outside, maybe when it's not quite as cold out. And there are some things you can do to keep yourself warm when you're flying outdoors, such as these sort of mittens or gloves that you can put on over your hands and over your radio. And so you can keep flying that way. I find that I can't fly very well at all if I have gloves on my hands. You just lose way too much dexterity. Sure, you can kind of fly a little bit, but you just don't have the control you'd have otherwise, which is why I like to fly from inside my car. But a lot of other people will point out that, yeah, you can fly outside in the cold if you've got one of these radio gloves. So if that's something you're interested in, you might want to go check those out. And related to the clothing aspect, uh, there was one time I came out flying and I left my hat and gloves at home because I thought, ah, oh, I'll be in the car. I'll be nice and warm. Why would I need my hat and gloves? Well, it turns out if you go flying a couple hundred yards out into a field and you crash, you have to go out there and get it. And when you're running out there in the cold, you're going to get cold. Your hands and your head and your ears. And you're picking up a drone that's probably covered in ice and snow and you're bringing it back to the car. So just because you're flying from your car doesn't mean you don't need to have some gloves and hats. So that's why I've got a hat with, I've got gloves in my pocket. So if I do go crash out there, I can still go get it and be comfortable while doing so. That brings me to more stuff that's related to the drone itself, like your batteries. LiPo batteries do not work as well in the cold. When I'm flying from inside my car, I can keep my batteries nice and warm in here in the car with me. But if you're outside in the cold, you're going to want to keep your batteries warm. Keep them in an interior pocket close to your body warmth. That'll help them work better. In the car, again, helps keep them warm. But as soon as you put them on the drone, get them outside, the cold's going to cause them to lose voltage. And when you're flying around, and if you're taking it easy, the batteries don't keep themselves as warm. But if you're flying really hard, you'll generate more heat from the batteries and they won't sag as much. But still, if you're flying in really cold temperatures, you'll notice that your batteries don't last as long. You don't have as much punch. The voltage display is just always going to be significantly lower than it would have been otherwise. So keep that in mind. And also on the charging side of things, don't charge your batteries when they're cold. Make sure they've warmed up to at least room temperature and don't like charge from your battery in your car in your hood outside in the cold because you can end up overcharging your batteries because the the voltage will be be lower because of the cold and you'll give them a full charge and then when the battery warms up they'll be way over voltage and another thing that i like to do with the drone itself is i like to put some led lights on it uh, i think it looks great flying at night and in the dark and you know when you've got friends following me or something it looks pretty cool but if you cr in the winter um, there's a lot less light. So you're tending to fly in the dark or late in the evenings and it's harder to see. And if you crash, especially if you land in some snow somewhere, the LED lights can make it much easier to find where you, where you crashed. Plus, if you're flying really low in the evening and you're right over the top of some fresh white snow, the LED lights glowing off the snow looks really cool, at least in my opinion. And so another thing to consider is that plastic in the cold gets brittle. So the colder it is, the more brittle the plastic gets, and especially like TPU I've found, when it's well below zero degrees outside and you crash, your TPU amounts tend to break. So you might have, wanna have a few extra of those on hand to be extra careful, not crash onto hard surfaces. Usually if you crash into some fluffy snow bank, they're not gonna break. But if you land on some hard pavement or hit some ice really hard, you're gonna find that the TPU mounts break much easier in the cold weather than they did when it was warm out. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention this, but my GoPro reminded me that GoPro batteries do not like the cold any more than any other battery does. So the amount of flight footage you can get out of your GoPro is going to diminish significantly when it's really cold outside. So if you've got something like a Hero 6, 7, 8, make sure you've got some extra batteries with if you fly more than four or five packs because you're going to need it. And one final tip that I want to talk about today, 
When you go out in the winter, you'll find that there's a lot of places that there are no people anymore. People don't like to be out in the cold as much. So you can go find parks that are deserted in the winter that were full of people during the summer. And uh, you can also fly over frozen lakes and ponds and not have the fear that if it, you crash, it's gonna be lost forever. That's uh, assuming that the ice is thick enough and safe enough for you to go out there and get it. So yeah, definitely check out spots and see what things are like in the winter because you may never know, there may be a really awesome spot that didn't work well in the summer, but in the winter, it's perfect for you. All right, well, that's all I've got for you for now. Stay tuned and talk to you later.